30 minutes and I'll convince you of anything. Starring Mark Steele, Maria McCurlane and Pete Sinclair. Thank you very much. Good evening and welcome to the Mark Steele Solution, the programme where I come up with a proposal to change all of our lives for the better. And tonight's proposal concerns school, which I particularly hated because I went to Swanley Comprehensive, which to me was like Colditz, <laughs> except worse, because at least there people don't come round every day going, prisoner war camp days, best days of your life, son. <laughs> some days, in fact, I just couldn't face going in at all and I'd meet some of my parents' friends and they'd say things like, you'll regret it in later life, my boy, not go, you think you're clever now, but you'll regret it in later life, and here I am in later life, and all I regret is that I ever went at all, really. <laughs> I'm sure if I ever had kids and I suspected that they'd been sneaking off to school, I'd go marching into the classroom and go, Oi, what have I told you about coming to this place? You'll regret this in late life, my boy! <laughs> so that's why tonight's proposal is... <laughs> that no one should go to school until they're 35. <laughs> now, no doubt there may be one or two people saying, but you wouldn't learn anything. But if you look at the older generation, what did they learn? From the way they answer questions, I wonder how they can have got on at school or if they ever answered any exams at all. Because if they got an exam question saying something like, why can't you get electricity from wood? They put, because you can't! <laughs> Where are the pyramids? Where you bloody well left them! <laughs> See, they don't send you to school between the ages of 5 and 16 to learn things. What do you learn in lessons like this? Here! Yeah. Chainsaw fight! Yay! Yeah, chainsaw fight! Cut his head off! Hey, Gigi's coming! Oh no! Yeah, Sorry's cheering off! <laughs> Brilliant! What was all that noise about? Weren't no noise, sir. Who's got the chainsaw? <laughs> Hand it over! And the rest. Now, where were we? You were just about to sit down, sir. On the chair, sir. <laughs> I'll decide when I sit down. Now. Yay! Yay! Bundle! Yeah, sit Get down! Off. Put that away! Whoa, 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 whoa! whoa, whoa Here, whoa. someone dig a trench! Stop this at once! Do not expect this sort of behaviour for third years. And what have I told you about bringing elephants into class? See, they're not trying to teach you anything. They're just trying to keep you under control. And it's not the kids' fault, because at that age, they don't even really want to be there. So the main thing that a teacher has to learn is just how to impose discipline. They'd actually be really stuck if they ever got a class that actually wanted to learn something. Right! I will not put up with noise in my classroom! Brown is something funny? No, sir. What? No, sir. Right! If anyone else has something to say, they'd better say it. Well, come on! A clever remark, someone? <laughs> what about a rude noise, hmm? We'd just like to get on with the lesson, sir. Right. Um... Well, I don't actually know anything, I'm afraid. I only learned how to make a class shut up. One thing that you do learn at school is violence. For instance, at my school they had a cane, and they make out that it's good for you. Yes, that's the trouble with the modern world, you know. Yes, too many weirdos and perverts, not enough discipline, that's right. Yes, get a young boy of about, ooh, uh, 10 or 11 years old. Yes, oh, yes, put him over your knee, give him a good sound threshing. Yes, on the bare bum. Yes, with a big ball of spaghetti. Yes, oh, God. Well, if anyone grow up into a pervert, no! <laughs> and it's just as sadistic now. Even the Mafia wouldn't get away with the excuses that teachers have for torturing kids. You wouldn't get the Mafia going, Hey, boss, we beat up the kid today and all that. Wait, what did he do? <laughs> well, boss, he was running in the corridor. <laughs> right. So it's no wonder that, because we go to school at the wrong age, Children pick up these habits. Now, for instance, before I used to get to the school gates, even, one of the other kids would come past and go, Oi, steal! Dead leg, my son! Yes! 
And this was just like hello would be for anybody else. You, know, you go past them one day and they don't do it and you think, ooh, what's upsetting this morning? <laughs> But the point is, where do they learn it from? They learn it from the teachers. For instance, at Swanley, the bullies even took a register on the first day of school. Name? Watkins. Feature? Overweight. <laughs> Pavrotti. <laughs> ah! <laughs> name? Roberts. Feature? Silly middle name. Come on in, what was it? Bottle knob. <laughs> But the biggest bully in any school is the games teacher. And you can't get away from him because you're made to do sport. So the kids who don't like sport end up nearly dead. And the kids who do like sport get nothing out of this because you've got all these people on your side who don't really want to be there. So, <laughs> so they're just a liability and get in the way because, after all, if sport was meant to be like this, then professional sport would be like it, wouldn't it? And the FA Cup final would start off with the two captains picking teams. <laughs> the guy now. I don't know, Lineker. Mm. <laughs> Gaskell and Robson. Oh, I don't know. And to make it realistic, you'd have four or five little skinny kids with glasses stood at the back. <laughs> and they'd be going, oh, I don't know, we had them last time. No, Tottenham never had them. Put them in goal or something. <laughs> Halfway through the second half, David Cole would be going, this is most extraordinary. The opposing fullbacks are playing conkers by the corner flag. <laughs> And then you're made to run round a field. No choice about this at all. You're made to run round a field. And some kids can't run, but they're made to run, so you have to go and run. And they go, come on, run, run, run. And the teachers know, especially the game teachers, divide and rule, you see, because there's one poor kid who hasn't got back yet, and the game teacher will go, right, none of you can go in until Watkins get back. And they're going, right, Watkins, you're for it, Pavrotti. You're going to bloody stuff for it, Pavrotti. And eventually he gets back. Can we go in now, sir? No. Because Watkins took so long, everyone's got to do another 50 press ups. <laughs> and you'll be going, you little fat shop, Everett, are you all right? <laughs> if you're going to teach someone, it is true, you do have to have respect. But you can either get respect from earning it, or you can just terrify someone into having it. And because we go to school when we're kids, they choose the terror method. Sometimes the terror, though, will be more subtle, like, for instance, when you get the games teacher's safety lecture. Look at this! The javelin. It may look like a toy, but in the wrong hands it can be a dangerous weapon. We had a young man here a few years ago. Roger Watkins was his name. He thought the javelin was a toy. He thought he didn't have to follow the correct safety procedure. Came running up to throw the javelin, wasn't wearing the correct footwear, slipped, skewered the whole of class 3BX. <laughs> They had to be taken to hospital in an intercity one, two, five, the only thing long enough to take them. And then the next day you'd go to the chemistry lesson. Look at this! Magnesium sulphate. It may look like a toy, but in the wrong hands it can be a dangerous weapon. We had a young man here a few years ago. Roger Watkins was his name. He thought magnesium sulphate was a toy. He thought he didn't have to worry about safety. Came running up to light the magnesium sulphate. Wasn't wearing the correct footwear. Slipped, caused an explosion, shot dead the Archduke Ferdinand and started World War I. <laughs> Now, if this happened when you were 35, you just go, ah, you've been on the mushrooms, mate. <laughs> but when you're a kid, you believe it, because you just think, well, teachers don't lie or get anything wrong, so they can just frighten you into doing anything. It's like, for instance, at assembly, you all have to sing hymns. No choice about it, you all have to just sing. And sometimes you think, oh, I won't sing today, there's 400 of us, no-one will notice. But they know. <laughs> teachers know. <laughs> they know you're the one not singing, and they come across the line here. Sing! <laughs> oh, Lord God. God who made everything, we should be so grateful to you. How dare we be on the same planet as the one you sent your son down to? <laughs> but once a month, assembly would actually get a little bit more interesting because the headmaster would get on at the end, and there's only one reason why the headmaster would get on at the end, and that's because something serious had gone down in the area. Because there'd been a crime in the area, and everybody knew it was someone from Swanley School who'd done it. So the headmaster would come on and go, 
Now, some of you know who it was who did this thing. <laughs> and you might think that you are being their friends by protecting them, but let me tell you this. If you are really their friends, you will come up to me after assembly and tell me who it was so I can put them in Boston. <laughs> and the fear doesn't even stop when you get home because you haven't done your homework. If it takes six men three hours to dig a hole five feet one and a half inches by 23.7 centimetres. Is Paul coming out to play football? Oh, no, he's doing his own work. It's all right, Mum, I'll do it after tea. Come on, let's get the on the end, pass it! Yeah, mate, <sighs> If it takes six men three hours to dig a hole... Star Trek! I'll do it in the morning, Mum. Oh, sod it, I'll do it on the bus. <laughs> right, if it takes six men... Oi, three... Pavrotti! Oh, no! <laughs> give us your book! Oh, no, give us it back! No, no, no! You've got to sing us an opera first, Pavrotti! <laughs> Oh, no, I'll, I'll do it in break. Right, if it takes six men... Ah, oh, what wins? Aren't you on litter duty? Oh, miss, I... Litter do... now! Oh, no, I'll do it in the lesson. <laughs> right, settle down. Now, for today's lesson, I want you all to read out your homework. You first, Watkins. <laughs> So this is why they send you to school from the ages of 5 to 15. So they can terrorise you into doing the work. If you went to school at 35, they couldn't do that. They'd have to keep you there by actually making the lessons interesting. Instead of just, at the moment, going, right, copy this down. I can see you, even though I'm not looking. <laughs> Pip, what, you're playing football dinner time? Yeah, I might be, yeah. Who are you playing football with? Yeah, we're going to meet over the swings, right? Who's got a ball? I don't think anyone's got a ball. We're just going to use a tin can, right? All right, we'll use that. Then. We've got a golf ball, maybe we'll make more over there. And then the most awful thing that you can hear in the whole world. Maybe you know the answer. Steel. Um, <clears throat> uh, is it Italy, sir? <laughs> I see. Still, the president of France is Italy, is it? <laughs> Detention in my office, four o'clock tomorrow night. But it's not the kid's fault that he was bored. You can't bore someone and then blame them for being bored. You shouldn't be so bloody boring if you don't want people to be bored, should you? You can't go around boring people. It's like, how dare you be bored by me? It's the bore and not the bore -y that is to blame here. Actors can't do this. Halfway through a play, they can't go, So, Ophelia, thee indeed hath come to forfeit thy right to the kingdom of... Oh, you! Full three along, fifth feet bloody back! Pay attention, or I've got a bloody kick you back here to watch the old thing again, and the matinee twice, tomorrow afternoon! <laughs> See, kids are interested in things, because children are always asking questions. They go, what does this do? How do you get trees? Why can't cats talk? How much does the moon weigh? <laughs> just think, oh, the kids are a bloody nuisance always asking questions, and then to think, oh, no, we'll send them to school, that'll bloody stop them learning. Then. <laughs> so they're interested in things like sex, for instance, when you're a kid, you know, because you want to know what's happening, your body's changing and your mind's changing, and you want all these answers to questions, but instead you get this librarian woman just embarrassed going, this sort of tubey thing here comes around <laughs> and sort of fits in some whatnot type sort of business thing. <laughs> And you want to know things at that age. You should be able to ask the questions you really want answered. You should be able to go, here, miss, do you reckon that's normal? <laughs> and kids are interested in politics. But all we got for politics was a film once a month so that the teacher could nip out into the corridor and have a fag. And the film would be narrated by a Blue Peter presenter who must have been skint that week. <laughs> in politics is communism and we're going to learn how it all began once upon a time Russia was ruled by a shy kindly man who loved animals <laughs> I 
He was called the Tsar. Now, he had a beautiful wife called the Tsarina, or Tsar's wife in Russian. Now, one chilly February morning, just as the Tsarina was watching her favourite troupe of Cossack dancers, she heard a noise. Boo! Down with the Tsar! <laughs> now, this noise was called a revolution. Unbeknown to the Tsarina, the Tsar had an enemy, a man called Lenin, leader of a gang called the Bolsheviks, which is Russian for psychopathic murderers. Now, Lenin had sold newspapers to all the people of Russia. Pravda, pravda. Making them miserable and want a revolution so he could turn Russia into a terrible place where you couldn't buy jeans anymore. Now, some people will, of course, be thinking, surely you learn some things at school other than just violence, fear and boredom. And in a way, you do, but there's a difference between learning and remembering. For instance, millions of adults learn about cooking, but because they're interested in it. So they spend all day searching for ingredients and reading cookery books, and that is learning. But all I got was this. Right, Monday morning. What do we do on Monday mornings? Scottish Second Division, sir. Well, we'd better hear it then, hadn't we? All together. Albion Rovers, Aloha, our growth, very Breaking Clyde, Dunfermline. Stop, stop! Who said Dunfermline? Come on. It was Steele, sir. So, Steele, since when have Dunfermline been in the Scottish Second Division? Don't know, sir. Have you learned your league tables, Steele? <laughs> no, sir. What? No, sir. Then perhaps we'd better help you. Thompson, hand me the jar of wood lice. Oh, sir. <laughs> sir. Open wide steel. Oh, no. <laughs> All of them. <laughs> right. Let's hope that's refreshed your memory. Now then, Vauxhall Conference. Altrincham, Bath. Boston United. <laughs> and this is the sort of stuff they test you on in exams, because it's not the subject that matters, it's have you remembered what they've told you. That's the reason they send you to school in the first place as a kid, because the one thing that they do want to make sure that you learn at school is to do as you're told. Don't question authority, just do as you're told. That's what they teach you right from the beginning when you're five years old. Because you remember that, because when you're five years old, you put your hand up in a lesson, and there's only one reason you put it up at that age. Can I go to the toilet, please, miss? Can I go to the toilet, please, miss? And if you're lucky, they'll go, go on then, hurry up. If you're unlucky, they'll go, no. Nope. Oh, miss. And then they say, why didn't you go at dinner time? And I used to think, well, there is an obvious answer to this. But it can't be the right answer, because you're an adult and a teacher and 30 and qualified and I'm five. <laughs> but years later, I realised that my obvious answer was the right answer. The reason I didn't go at dinner time was because I didn't bloody well want to go at dinner time. So there'd be no point in me going because I didn't want to go then. I'd have just stood there and nothing would have come out because I didn't want to go. And now I've put my hand up politely so that you let me to go in the proper place so I don't leave a puddle on the floor. Because you can't piss in advance, can you, miss? That's the answer. Because, miss, bodily functions aren't like a bank, are they, miss? You can't say, oh, I've got a busy day tomorrow, I won't have time for a crap, I'll have three today instead. <laughs> So, I think that we're all agreed, then, that sending children to school is stupid. But before we come to the Mark Still solution, let's hear from our regular guest, Mr Coldy Sack. Education, it's an outrage! They were going to build a school near here. I said, I'm not having it, bloody kids, spending ratepayers' money so they can laze around all day long reading the two times table. How would they like it if I kept leaving the office to play hopscotch? Oh, difference then! <laughs> well, I'm not having it! Keeping me awake all hours of the day and night, opening and shutting their desk. Next thing, there'll be lollipop ladies all round your house telling you when you can and can't cross the living room to make a cup of tea. And the money they spend on chalk! 
They could have spent that money hanging people. <laughs> oh, you know where they'll end up, don't you? Free toffee apples paid for by the taxpayer. That's where Basil Brush running the swimming pool. Ninja Turtles running around the house every morning getting pizza all over the furniture. 46 pence for a packet of Marmite. It's an outrage. And look at the licorice all sorts they steal. No wonder that the recession with all these kids running around stealing the balance of payments deficit. They should have a big sign up saying only one school child allowed in the economy at any one time. But do they take any notice? No. Next thing they'll be arrested if they're not stealing an arrow. Look at the number of times they go to the toilet. Bad Back and forth and back and forth and back and forth, increasing the levels of urine in the borough. God knows what that does to the price of the property. Here's some letters I've written to the Education Authority. Dear Education Authority, last week I saw one of your teachers whistling. Isn't there enough noise in the world? It's an outrage. <laughs> Here's another one. Dear Education Authority, when I was at school I learned the capital of Zambia. Now I've forgotten it. What good was that? It's an outrage. <laughs> Here's another one. Dear Education Authority, why, oh, 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 why? That's as far as I got with that one, but it's coming on, don't you think? <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Coldisack. Now, there are some people who believe that the existing school system can be reformed, like, for instance, the trendy teachers, the sort of people that used to come to our school once a month when the real one was ill. Right, class, what we're going to do today is discuss the role of women in the transformation of water into steam. <laughs> now, Johnny, you're a deprived gypsy kid. I think we should all hear what you think. I think you're a wanker, sir. <laughs> Now, some people seem to think that the answer lies in the past. For instance, the Burging Society for Educational Reform has just released this video. Children at play, the happy sound of innocence. But no longer, for this is the London borough of Lambeth. <laughs> Instead of being taught the necessities of life, reading, writing, eating wood lice, Children as young as five are forced to be homosexual. And a typical day at school in Lambeth begins with double joyriding. Yeah, look, right, class, today I'm going to teach you how to make a petrol bomb and, like, throw it at the pigs. Oh, please, sir, can't we recite the Scottish Second Division? <laughs> no, Sonny, I'm afraid you can't. In Lambeth, such traditional teaching methods have been banned, and any teacher found using them is sent on a Cuba awareness course. <laughs> What's needed is a return to the old-fashioned standards, when the curriculum included compulsory study of the commentary on Virginia Wade's victory at Wimbledon in 1977. Come on, boy. Two all, final set. Miss Wade to serve. Let's hear it. Um, uh, uh, Ginny serves to the forehand, backhand, cross-court return, go to the net. Oh, I say. <laughs> So come on, Lambert, let's have less of the lesbian studies and more about Virginia Weed. It's obvious, isn't it? The only possible answer is to send people to school when they're 35. Just think of all the advantages. When you're that age, you know what you want to learn, you know why you want to learn it, and if a teacher tried to act like they do now, this would happen. Right, sit down, homework on desk. You, collect it and bring it to the front. You talking to me, mate? <laughs> Who do you think I'm talking to, Lawrence of Arabia? You, why haven't you done your homework? My kids have got measles. Well, you should have found a cure for it, shouldn't you? <laughs> Look, could we just get on with things? I'll be the one who decides when we get on with things. Where do you think you're going? I'm going home, mate. I've got a book on this at home. I'm going to go home and read that. Come back, all of you. Come on. Ah. So it's uh, just you today, Johnny. What do you think? I think you're a wanker, sir. <laughs> And teachers couldn't get away with lessons being boring anymore. Write this down and remember it. Je mangeais, tu as mangé, il a mangé. Professeur, tu manges à côté des pompes. What? Means you're round the bend. My wife's French and she didn't learn to speak it like that. Oh, well, perhaps you'd like to take the lesson then. Yeah, all right. Any questions? Yeah, what's French for stop cutting me up? 
Yeah, how do you say 15 francs for a little titchy bit of cheese? <laughs> and sex education classes would be interesting. Right, has anybody got any questions? Um, yes. I like to be tied up with elastic bands, <laughs> spanked with a pound of mushrooms, <laughs> and have marmite licked off my naked body by a hedgehog. <laughs> Here, miss, do you reckon that's normal? <laughs> And best of all, games teachers would have to change. Because if they tried to force 35-year-olds to run round fields and do things that they found physically impossible, you could do it back to them. You could go back into the staff room when the PE teacher was there in front of all the other teachers and you'd have a big box full of red-hot pokers and go, Oi, Mr Murray, pick one of them up. I can't pick one of them up. Can't or won't. <laughs> I haven't got the right gear for picking up a red-hot... Well, you'd have to do it in your underpants then, wouldn't you? <laughs> And so, under the new scheme, with the Mark Steele solution in place, teachers and pupils genuinely interested and enjoying school, what would a typical everyday school day be like? Name? Pavarotti. Oh, you've lost weight. <laughs> Hi, sorry I'm on time. Oh, that's OK. You haven't been in for a while, have you? No, I took a month off. I really got into that book you gave me on microbiology. I found a cure for the common cold. Oh, well, in that case, you can all go home, then. Yeah. You're joking. They had this marvellous new system's in operation. I'd much rather stay here. Yeah, shall we do some history? Uh, OK, let's start with the 1990s. Now, back then, people were sent to school at the age of five. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? And they actually tried to make kids sit at desks and learn things like French. Why didn't they just send them to France like we do now? Yeah, I mean, if you wait till you're 35, you learn so much more at school. That's right. This morning, I learnt how to split the atom in physics, brought peace to the Lebanon in geography, and in woodwork made contact with an alien civilization. Yeah, it's just about perfect, isn't it? What do you think, Johnny? I think you're a wanker, sir. <laughs> and so you've heard the arguments. Now all that remains is for you people here to vote. So all those in favour of this marvellous new system that will make everybody happy forever. <laughs> And all those against. <laughs> well, what an astonishing result. <laughs> Thanks very much. That was the Mark Steele Solution. Good night.